All right, welcome to a Red Road TV special. We have the man, the myth, the legend, Joey Styles with us today. Welcome to the show, Joey. Oh, man, what's going on, brother? How you doing out there? Doing well, man. I appreciate you taking some time and being with us. And of course, at Red Road TV, our motto is all indigenous all the time. And one of the things about indigenous communities that's a little bit different than many other communities is it's more than DNA. It's more than just blood. It's about community. It's about fellowship and it's about family. And in my life, I am blessed with three wonderful children. And my oldest child, my daughter, my only daughter, is in uh, attending college and playing basketball at American Indian College in Phoenix, Arizona, which is 24 hours away from her daddy. And uh, it's extremely hard on me. And I think it's pretty tough on her as well, being away from her family. But she is the most amazing daughter that any man could ever ask for. She is the most beautiful the most considerate, uh, the hardest worker I've ever been around, smart. I mean, she is absolutely the total package and the most unbelievable daughter. And she's fixing to have her 20th birthday. And unfortunately, because of the coronavirus and everything going around, she's not going to be able to be here with us. And so she's a big Joey Styles fan. So if you don't mind, could you just give her a shout out? Yo, Ho, wherever you are right now, I just want to send birthday wishes to you. From your dad, you know, your dad was talking to me about you and all the good things you got going on. Basketball, you're killing it. Uh, school, you're killing it. Community, you're doing your thing. And just keep doing you. The, the future is yours. And anything you want to do in this world, you can do. Just put your mind to it. Man, I appreciate it. I know she's going to love that because she, like many people, is a big, big Joey Styles fan. And Joey, I just want to start by talking a little bit about this historic career that is far from over, but... You've done so many things and you paved so many roads for the indigenous artists of the future. And I want to talk about your career, but before we get into your career, you know, one thing I love about your music is as an artist, you're always evolving. You're always trying new things, doing new things, pushing the limits, and you're always evolving again as an artist. But that is something that has happened in your personal life as well. I was reading about your you know, when you were younger and you were doing things that you shouldn't be doing, getting into trouble. And you talked about in this interview that I read a, a moment that had happened where your cousin had been killed and the impact that that had on you and the change that came from that experience. And so for our listeners that maybe just know Joey Styles, the musician, can you share with them a little bit about the evolution of Joey Styles as a person? Well, for me, it was all like, this you know like they say hurt people hurt people and i was going through a lot of stuff with my family you know a lot of our people go through a lot of the issues at home coming from poverty and addictions and violence so those are issues that we became normalized with and i was angry and a lot of my friends were in and out of prison a lot of them were ending up in graves and like you said my cousin had passed on so there was a point where i became angry and to me whether I ended up in debt or in jail. It really didn't matter to me. And I was sitting in the back of a cop car this one day. And the day my cousin got buried, the holy lady said to us, she said, you guys don't have to cry. You know, if you, you, you miss Kevin, you can just pray to Kevin and talk to Kevin. So I was sitting in the back of that cop car and I prayed to Kevin. I said, you know what, Kevin? Actually, I do care if I die or go to jail. I think there's more to life than this. So I said a little prayer to him, said a prayer to creator. And then the police officer came and handed me back my ID and said I was free to go. And after that, I moved to Vancouver, which is somewhere completely far away from where I grew up. And I just changed my life. It wasn't easy at first. I was broke, staying on couches, just make and do however I had to do it. But uh, I stuck to my word because I think that Creator gifted us with this beautiful life. So let's make the most of it. And that's kind of where the upward climb started. Absolutely. And it was at that point that you really began to focus on your career and made a lot of sacrifices that even today people probably don't know about. As you talked about sleeping on other couches and you're really grinding, you're really chasing your craft and trying to become this artist that you know that you can be. And finally, after all the grinding in 2006, you released the video Long Way. And man, it almost went I mean pretty much went viral and overnight people begin to know who Joey Styles was as this 
song and this video became a huge hit. So my question for you is this, what was it like in 2006 after all this hard work and all of this grinding and all of this sacrifice to finally start to see some of your hard work pay off? I did really give myself a pat in the back and I still have it at this point, you know, like uh, I'm someone that is addicted to the work and addicted to this like invisible uh, trophy that I can't see. <clears throat> so I've just been chasing after this, these results that um, I guess when I get to this finish line, I set a new finish line for myself and I keep resetting it. So at that point when Longway came out, I didn't realize what was about to happen. Like people were going to start buying my music. I was going to be booked for shows all across the world for that for that conversation um and you know i just things just started to go good for me you know i started going to places like japan and i started going to places like europe traveling to africa all across america and it opened up my eyes to a different world and that's when my music became more positive because before that i was basically like a journalist for what was going on with our people and in the prairies where i come from as an Aboriginal male, you're 33 times more likely to go to prison than any other race. And my dad graduated in prison and he made something big of himself. So just seeing like where we came from, and where we are going and where we're going to end up is just like a beautiful transition and evolution is natural. So I've just been evolving and letting everything come to me that feels natural at the time. Absolutely. And Joey, knowing you and knowing how you are, I know when you make music, you don't do it for the accolades. You don't do it for the awards. You don't do it for the notoriety. You don't do it for those reasons. But in 2009, when you dropped the album Black Star, it definitely began to receive all of those awards and those acknowledgments and all of the accolades that you could possibly dream of begin to happen. And my question for you is this, when you dropped this album, did you have any idea that it was going to blow up to the level that it did and it was going to have the impact and you were going to win the awards that you did win. I was just doing it for the love. I was trying to push myself to do something I knew I could do that other people didn't think I could do. Um, when I was young, I was called an overachiever and I didn't like that because I was like, what? I'm not expected to do anything in this life. But now I really love it when people call me an overachiever or the underdog because, you know, LeBron James, uh, late Kobe Bryant, um, Tiger Woods, uh, Michael Jordan, all these people, they're all overachievers. They did more than they're supposed to do. And I think that's what I kind of have been gearing my whole career off of. You know, I've always given myself high hopes and high expectations. So I put that out. I didn't really have expectations, but I knew I wanted to keep going higher and higher and higher and higher with it. So I didn't give myself an initial like finish on, like I said, because when I get there, I'm like, nope, I could do more. Nope, I could do more. So when that came out, I guess the awards started coming in. I started being on TV, movies, radio. And when all that stuff started coming in, I guess, I guess I just started focusing a lot of the energy on trying to do good for our people. Like, you know, there's like a lot of issues in the plains where I come from with gang violence, with addictions, with uh, suicide, with sexual abuse. And I've been able to travel all across North America and tell my story of the things I went through, the things my family went through. And to me, that's success. That is like something I feel like I'm winning when I'm able to change lives. Like when I sit in my studio, there's like all these traditional medicines I have. There's you know, sage, cedar, sweetgrass, um, rat root, um, bear root, all these different things. And I pray every day that my music, and my art, my ideology, uh, all the gifts I was given from creator, they're used to heal people. So for me, the music's one thing, but that's just an avenue to get my popularity bigger. But when my popularity is as big as it's ever going to be or grow, I want to use that for something good. I don't want to use it to pat myself on the back. That brings me to 2013, where there was another shift in your work and what it was that you were doing. You were traveling, but not only as a musician, but you began to do workshops in the community and in indigenous communities and health and wealth workshops and really begin to sow into our youth and into our young indigenous people. And that's something that I appreciate so much, man, because, you know, first of all, we know that there's healing in music. You know, less than two years ago, I was going through chemotherapy and I was every day playing artists like yourself and like Dreesus. And man, that music would just give me life. It would give me energy I didn't have. It would, you know, just kind of restore my body a little bit each day. 
as I would play your music and, and there's healing and there's wonderful works inside of music, but there's more than just music. You're doing it in the community and why that's so important. I, I tell people this all the time. We find the tools a lot of time with our youth, things like basketball and music that help them to get off the reservation. And they'll go to college or they'll go on with their career and they'll find success, whatever level that might be. But we forget to tell them an important part of the equation. And that is after they found that success, now come back to your homeland, come back to the reservation and give back to the younger generation so into our youth and our younger generation so that they don't have to go through the same struggles and break down the same walls and go through the same barriers that we had to go through. And so I think that's so important. And that's something that you're not just talking about in your music, but you're doing it in your life. And can you just talk to our, our viewers a little bit about what that's like, those workshops and sewing in the community and what that's meant to you? I really like look every day at ways to make myself better and stronger, you know, so I'm looking at health and wellness is something I, I'm very passionate about, like looking at traditional food plans, looking at different exercise routines. I pray every day. Um, since I had my, my first kid, I have two, two kids now. Um, when I had him, I kind of made an oath and a pledge that, you know, I'm going to quit the teeter totter game where I'm going back and forth between good and bad. I do something bad. I make up for it, but I do something good and go back and forth, you know? So now I just made a pledge. I want to serve love, light and wellness. So now I'm on this side of the fence. I'm not going back to that dark side because even when I did make that transition back in the day, when I was in the back of that cop car, I still, you know, once in a while do something which was a little questionable as far as morals go. And now I really, really push it, push myself to, be consistently on that good side where I'm trying to help people. I want to make people's lives better. Cause I know what my mom and dad went through and I used to feel sorry for myself and play the victim. Like, Oh, poor me. Why did I go through this? Um, but I decided I want to be a victor. I don't want to be a victim anymore because I used to feel sorry for myself, but how am I going to feel sorry for myself when there's people in Syria that are just looking for a place that's not going to get blown up overnight or get shot at and they have no food or water. So, I guess there's no really way to compare struggle and stuff like that, right. but sometimes it's good to put things in perspective. And I've really put things in perspective now how lucky I am to have a son and a daughter and a fiance that I love. And I'm able to travel all these communities and tell them what I've been through. And if I could turn it around from going through the things I went through, all the things I was faced with, and I can make it something out of myself and out of my life, then why can't? you do it or any other person do it. We, we all go through the same things. We all have struggles, we all have ups and downs. So we just got to face reality and just keep going. You know, we all have some things in life that are not fair. We've all been through something in life, which we think, why me? Why did this happen to me? This makes no sense. This isn't fair. But the thing is that separates people is how are you going to overcome that? And I want to teach people that you could overcome that and you can make something of your life and anything's possible. If you want to be an astronaut, be an astronaut. If you want to be a brain surgeon, then be a brain surgeon. And the same thing, basketball player, musician, rapper, piano player, hockey player, whatever you want to do, just do it. Man, those words are so powerful, man, and so true. And I've got to tell you, my own life, I've seen that. And it reminds me of a, a situation that I went through when I was younger. You know, I had a chip on my shoulder because of some of the things that I've been through and some of the things I had faced to that point. And I had a big old boulder that sat on my shoulder and man, I was struggling and I was really at a crossroads in my life. And I was fortunate. Somebody very wise sat down and said to me, you know, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% of how you react to what happens to you. And that's a theme that I've seen throughout your works, man, that you teach people that listen Sometimes bad things happen to good people. And yeah, sometimes the things that we're facing in life are because of things that we've done. Sometimes they're because of things we have no control over. But the end result, it's not about the mistakes that you've made or the bad things that happen to you unfairly. It's about how you respond to them. And I've seen that so many times through the, you know, the words that you spoke and the, you know, the things that you've said and the songs that you've sang. And it's been a big part of your testimony exactly 
Um, so many of my friends I've lost over the last however many years I've been kind of an adult. And um, it's sad that some of them weren't able to see that there is a rainbow at the end of that storm, that there is a right. bright light at the end of that tunnel. So like just this last couple months, one of my friends was murdered. Uh, one of the guys I rap with Tommy Da, RIP, he just um, passed away from committing suicide. Yeah. One of my great, great, like my best friends in the world, actually, uh, Juice, he just passed away around Christmas time from an overdose. So a lot of these people we shared in common was the struggle. And yeah. we've all been through struggles, but it's sad that some people aren't able to find themselves out of the struggle before it's too late because if you know if you just kind of punch through it just a little bit longer then there will be ups you know that's the kind of world we live in like yin and yang so it's like right. uh, white and black old and young uh, small and big tall short you know and there's always duality in this world like polar opposites they call it so people don't realize that when they're in that down period whether it's a two-year down period there's going to be a two-year up period so you just got to sure. try to find a way to level out and just remind yourself that there's going to be swings of energy of things going your way or things not going your way. And if you could manage to find that balance, then you're never going to have downtime. Everything's going to go the way it's meant to and just leave everything creator's hand. And that's so true. So true. Now, one of the reasons that young indigenous artists look up to you so much is because you've been able to do something that is almost never done. And that is not only are you this iconic figure in our community but you've also been able to hit the mainstream media as well and i can't tell you how many times i've seen you know this mainstream artist and and know that they're not as good as many of the indigenous artists that nobody knows about because a lot of times you've got to put in 10 20 50 100 times the work that a non-indigenous person has to put in to get the same amount of success but you've been able to break through in that mainstream media you're um, recently on the soundtrack for the hit movie Wind River, you recently performed on the hit show Yellowstone. And so my question for you is this, what was that process like to not only have success in the indigenous community, but to be able to go mainstream as well? It feels good because our people deserve to be there. I know yeah. so many artists, like brothers and sisters that are just crazy, like as far as the artistry and their thinking and their talent and their skills, everything's just on the next level, but it's very competitive. And that same goes for like black artists, white artists. There's a lot of black, white artists that are amazing artists, but they don't get there because I think it's self doubt. One of the things that plays a factor in that, I believe like for me, like in my early days in my career, if I had $30,000 I made from show money, I'd put it all back into one video, which I, did over and over again 50 grand for a video or uh 10 grand for a beat or you know I, I always put everything i had i was willing to invest in myself and a lot of people are scared to invest in themselves they're, they're scared to put the time into their craft but for me i felt like i was a good investment and i think that every young brother and sister should think if i'm a good investment i want to i should be doing that schoolwork because i'm a good investment and i'm going to get a crazy job as a lawyer and i'm going to be making that guap i'm going to get paper so that was the difference, I think, for me to reach those levels where I believed in myself. Um, when no one else believed in me, my mom and dad didn't believe in me. They thought this was like a little hobby or was something that was in the passing. But I believed in myself and I thought, you know, that I'm doing what I love. And I know it's only a matter of time before people can see my vision I have. Because I, I have a vision and it's slowly come to life. You know, before, before I kind of uh, started my family, I used to be like the wind. I was always going everywhere, covering all this ground, but I was never able to plant roots. And now I got that earth element, you know? So now I'm in Haida Gwaii on the West Coast, uh, island south of Alaska. I planted my roots and now I'm building things. There's, things are going, looking much more promising, going really good because it's not about how much ground you're covering, how much stuff you're doing. I'm, now I'm planting roots and I'm actually, the forest is growing. And I've, I've been able to learn a lot from the elements. If you look at fire, fire is about rejuvenation and rebuilding yourself. If things aren't working, burn down what you're doing and let it regrow. And uh, water, take the path of least resistance. So I've kind of used my teachings, my traditional teachings, 
and uh, from the holy men, the holy women, um, from some of the OGs when I was young, that kind of like took me under the wing and made sure I was cool in the streets when I was young. They gave me advice, and I took that advice, and I took that self confidence I had. And I always knew if you want something, you gotta go get it. You just gotta do it, like Nike said. And you're you're worth the investment. So invest in yourself, believe in yourself, and do it. Joey, I gotta tell you, man, why I think this is so important. Because I, I really personally could care less about, you know, the mainstream media and that area and that facet of music. But why I think it's so important is because our children need to see people succeed that look like them. They need to hear people that sound like them, that come from the same communities that they come from, that have the same values that they have. And, you know, I, I go back to something I've talked about many times. And that is the fact that too many of our communities still have that residential boarding school mentality where we're just going to take whatever crumbs are handed to us. In fact, you can go on most reservations and when you talk to a lot of children and a lot of the youth, many of them don't even want to make eye contact because there's this, this spirit that has hovered over our people for too long. And we haven't operated in the power and the authority that that we're supposed to, that our ancestors fought for. Because here's the thing, man, being indigenous, we come from warriors. We have warrior DNA. Every one of our ancestors should have been killed out, but instead they kept fighting, they kept moving, they kept bucking the system and kept going, and they survived. We have had genocide attempted on us by multiple governments multiple times, and yet we are still here and we are still functional. And so when our children, you know, that are and our youth can see Joey Styles succeed and they can see them having success on their TV and, you know, and on their computers and they see the success that you're having, they know, okay, if Joey did it, I can do it. And that's why it's so important that, that they see people that look like them, that, that are some from the same background they're from find success. I agree with you, man. Like, I think that's what I'm really, really proud of is I want people to learn that, like you said, we're warriors. Like we come from like some serious bloodlines here, like Geronimo, Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, uh, Piapot, Poundmaker, Red Bull, you know, all these different chiefs. Um, we come from these bloodlines, these different tribes, and these people, like you said, sacrificed their lives and did some did some crazy things and went through some crazy things yeah. and survived. So now if our spirits are, like, I guess, uh, shrunken down to these little small pebbles and they're stuck inside of us and they're frozen, then we're, we're making our ancestors cry. And I think that Let's make them glow. Let's make them spark like lightning or thunderbirds in the sky. By by us being proud and having that energy and, you know, like being more extroverted with ourselves and being proud and never keeping your head to the ground. Always keep your head up. And, you know, you, you look everyone in the eye when you talk to them. That makes them glow. And I think that that is something, I guess, I was one of my gifts. You know, everyone has a gift in this world. Everybody. Creator gave everyone a special gift, and that was probably a gift I was very, very proud of because, you know, growing up, I had a few stepdads that uh, gave me some nasty whoopings, and um, they weren't able to break me. I would just look them in the eye and say, whatever, you know, my dad, don't tell me what to do. And I kept that attitude. Even when I was in the streets, I kept that attitude. And when I went to these mainstream stages or TV shows or radio or nightclubs with celebrities or coming up with different A-list celebrities that I've come up with along the way. I'm like, no, you know, you're not better than me. And I'm no better than you. And the young, the young homie that's going to be coming in here in 10 years from now, it's off the res, vice versa. You know, we're all the same. We all have the same potential. We could all reach the same heights if we really push and believe in ourselves and keep going. It's a 10,000 hour rule. And most people, Lot, you know what I do now when someone messages me and they're like, let's make a song. I'm like, how many hours do you have? How many hours do you have in uh, rapping? They'll tell me. I'm like, hey, you need about like 8,000 more hours. <laughs> like, what? I'm like, once you get 10,000 hours, you master your craft. And I'm way over 10,000 hours. So if someone wants to do something, they have to be invested into it. And I'll say, I'll say, rap every day for two hours a day. And then in six months from now, come to me and, and send me a video now. And in six months, I want to see the video and know if you're telling the truth. So I, awesome. I, I kind of fact check these cats, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> realistically, like I said, I kind of force the investment in themselves because sometimes people 
don't realize they're worth it, you know, or maybe okay. they're just caught up playing video games or something like that. Because I remember my friends going to the club and getting girls. That's what they were doing. Sure. And I was like, no, I'm staying home tonight. I'm going to make a beat. I'm going to write a song. I'm going to record a song. And that's what I was doing. And I guess if you really love something and you stick to it, it's easier to feel that confidence in your spirit. You know, if you're a basketball player and, you know, you put those hours in, you know you're not going to miss that open three and you hit it every single time. When you get that ball three-point line, your head's going to be up. You're not going to be looking down off him. It's like, I shot this shot. 10,000 times is nothing. I'm going to make the shot again. And that confidence pulls through when you uh, invest yourself into something. Absolutely, man. And, you know, the truth is, is a lot of people, they want it, but they just kind of want it. You know what I mean? They don't want to go all in. And so I appreciate the fact that you're saying, hey, man, I'll help you. I'll work with you, but you're going to put in the work and the effort first. Now, we talked a little bit about Yellowstone and some of these things, but it turns out that you've got someone in your home that could give you some acting advice if you ever need it for one of those, one of those shows That's your life partner, Carson Gray, who you share a son and a daughter with, as you talked about before. And y'all just came out with a new album together, man. I didn't know about it and I turned it on and it's a little different, but I liked it, man. I really liked it. What was that process like for you and Carson putting this album together? Well, we live together and we have a, a nice little home studio. So just, you know, I'll be in the back, working on some music and I'll send her something or I'll show her something on her phone or whatever. And she'll fall in love with it. And then we make something happen. So it's a different project because it's got a different sound because like the energy when I'm by myself is different when you put that feminine energy with it. Right. So when you mix the masculine and feminine energy, it's like a different creation process. And me and her as a couple, we've gone through different things and I've gone through as a solo person, you know, like, Right. I come from a place where, like I said, I was in the streets. And then after that, I was a rock star traveling around the world. And then I was uh, one time I was probably a little bit more wild, uh, partying around, meeting a lot of different girls. But now, you know, I'm straight edge now. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I'm healthy. I try to work out at least five days a week. I eat really clean. I try to eat um, as much wild food as I can, like organic, you know. I try to eat moose, deer, caribou, elk, salmon, halibut. Like, that's how we like eating, you know, around right. this house. That's right. So that project, back to the subject, that project came out, and it was just kind of to celebrate our love together. And we have a new project coming out right now, and it's even a step further than that, because with that one, it was more, <clears throat> we really wanted to have the organic feel to it, you know, where everything just right. so naturally came out so easy, and it was, like, effortless. But we have a project right now and we're kind of more geared towards singles and radio singles. And yeah, because like, I guess when you have as much hours into it as me, you could kind of consciously like decide what you want to do. Like, I want to make a rap right. record that is going to get someone ready, put them in warrior drill drill mode, you know, or I want to do a track right now that's going to make someone ease up and take their mind off their problems. But for that first project, it was all about just celebrating love. For so this new project yeah, we're working yeah. on, it's about, it's more about, like, I guess, uh, just trying to push the level of that invisible finish line, like I said. And when we get to that height, we're going to keep resetting it, resetting it, resetting it. So in my solo project, which is, it's, there's a film I'm working on right now. It's called Three Eye Hip. And that's going to be out, it was supposed to be out this summer, but the way things are going with this, virus thing that's floating around man i don't think uh i'm gonna be rushing right. to put it out right now but uh so i'm putting out the film and then it's come with the soundtrack which is like gonna be like an album and three eye hip basically is like the idea that we all have a third eye it's like a kind of like a ancient kind of teaching from the eastern world like a, a third eye is right. like a, a connection to spirit you know and then i think i have that connection to spirit i always have and that's why I, those bullets never hit me. That's why those jail sentences never hit me. That's why um, I never really got too deep in the deep end because there was a different purpose for me and the spirit led me down that path. And hip, people think it's just hip hop, but no, hip is like, when you're hip to something, you understand it. So it's like, right. I want to understand the world from a more spiritual approach when I talk about polarity and duality. Um, because, you know, like, uh, I have a lot of talks back and forth between uh, I'm a Plains Cree and a Métis also. So I have family that 
is Christian. I have family that strictly only does the Sundance lodges and ceremonies. But I right. think there's beauty in both, and I think there's also, you know, you're gonna you're gonna meet elders, holy people in our community that are trying to exploit younger girls, trying to use the spirituality to, to find their way into a favorable situation. And then you go back to the Christian community and look what happened at the residential schools. There's right. all these people, again, they're exploiting their position. So I think that there's beauty in everything, you know, and there's also like a vile poison and nastiness and everything. That's fact, that duality. And now I've been around the world. I've been to all the museums. I'm a visual artist now. Um, I understand fashion. I'm a foodie. So I, I think I have a, a good understanding of the world in my travels. So that's where the hip comes in. So Three Eye Hip is going to be a film. And it's just going to basically show the world where I'm at now. Because in the past, a lot of people would see like us with our Lamborghinis and our, our Escalades and, our, you know, the jets and all the stuff. Like we, we've actually done that. You know? and, um, all the stuff that people sing about and rap about. Like you hear guys talk about all the cars and all the trips and all the money, but we actually did that. So, but now I'm kind of graduated from that because I'm not a little boy anymore. You know, when I was a young That's boy, right. this is cool. But now for me, I have a different understanding of the world. So now I want to show that there's a different side of the world. There's a different beauty of the world. And my idea of rich now as I'm a family man is different than when I was a teenager. Absolutely, man. And you talk about something that really resonates with me. You know, I've got three children, as I talked about earlier, and, and really been blessed. I've been, uh, got married when I was 19, been married for 20 years now. And it's amazing how through those years, my perspective and my desires and what I cared about changed early in my life, man. It was all about notoriety and, and money and chasing dreams and power and positions. But now for me, you know, all of those things, money and all of that is just a tool to provide for my family and to give back to my community and time, you know, elders would tell you, you know, will tell you this when you're younger and you don't really get it till you're older, but time has proven to me that the things that really matter in life are our families and our communities, not the money, not the gold, not the silver, not the accomplishments, not the recognition. It's about what we can do for other people. Absolutely. Um, I used to, when I was getting all that money, I was talking about the piles and piles and piles of money where there'd be money on money everywhere. I would, I didn't have any respect for it because I almost thought it was evil. You know, I always had this feeling like, oh, I seen what it did to people and I seen how it changed people against each other. But I realized that money is not evil. It's just like, all it is is basically just like showcasing a man's true heart. You know what I mean? So, if a man's a really good That's person, he's going to do right. really, really good things with his money. If a man's a nasty person, then he's going to be doing the nastiest things you imagine with that money. So now I want to use that money as a tool to better my family. And then, you know, when we get that paper, that's that, when we have paper that's like that old money style paper, then we could open up these um, wellness institutes preserving our culture that are self-sustainable, that can keep themselves going and going even at well after. Absolutely. Listen, Joey, I appreciate so much you taking some time and being with us and not just for our listeners sake, man, it has really been a blessing to my soul and the wisdom that you've been imparting to us and appreciate it so much. And now again, your hands are on so many things. You're doing so many different things. Will you allow our listeners to know and our viewers to know where they can go and follow you on social media so they can see and track some of the awesome things that you're doing? Yeah, um, you can hit me up at Joey Styles. That's J O E Y Styles with a Z at the end. Um, yeah, and then Joey Styles World, where if it's not Joey Styles, because on a few of them, you know, I had it's Joey Styles World. You can't change it or whatever. So uh, yeah, and yo, mad props, mad respect, mad love to you and all you're doing. Um, I think you're a great dude, and it's awesome to connect with like-minded people. And I know you're continue doing good things for the people i could sense it and yeah i'm happy to connect with you and if you need anything in the future man i got you we got you over here stress street lifestyle club joy styles carson gray all of us we got you oh man that's awesome man i look forward to working with you guys in the future and in the end it's all about helping our people and 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 getting them to the place they're supposed to be absolutely brother 
Absolutely, brother. Absolutely.